Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plaster and today what we're doing is we're going to show you how to do an unusual texture. We're going to show you the cements we use and how to do it, where to buy it and all that stuff because I know you'll ask me anyway. See that pattern right there? It's an old world finish. That just means they did it when they had craftsmanship. Today everybody wants a three coat system. Scratch brown and a color coat. That's craftsman. We'll show you how we match that. Uh, I can't match it with this pull trial, but I've got my square trials, and I'll show you how we do that. Uh, you want to you want have me some mud, Edgar? Okay, what we're doing, guys, is we're covering cinder block. And when you cover cinder block, it's the same as if you're covering concrete. It's the same as if you're covering terracotta. It's the same material that we're applying that we do our scratch and brown with over wood substrates such as if I have paper wire it's the same material we're going to show you this material soon too as soon as I warm up a bit because it is it's pretty cold right now guys uh, if it were raining it would be snow so I'm trying to warm up right here and all right, give me some mud, bud. Let me warm these cold bones up. All right. This stuff, once we get started and I warm up, I'll show you a little bit more about materials and stuff like that. How cold can you put this on? Uh, I put it on, it was snowing. We were doing a straw bale house and it was snowing. And it was just lightly snowing on us while we were working. <laughs> it was so cold that the water hose was freezing unless you kept it on. But we took our shirts off because once you start working, you warm up quick, especially if you know what you're doing. So this is just a base coat, guys. How thick is a base coat got to be? In order to cover the grout lines, you got to go at least, uh, like it's a, at least a half inch, guys. If you're going to paint a wall, you don't have to go a half inch. You can go less, but you're best, you're best going at least a half inch, guys. And the cinder block wall here, most of you folks, ah, holiday. Most of you folks watch what we do. We apply bonding agents over walls. This wall... We hit a bond, we put our bonding agent Weldcrete over some of the corners for specific reasons. But what I've done is I will hydrate or mist these walls, although they're brand new. Uh, I mean, when I say brand new, they're just built uh, about a month ago. And I took a wire brush, and with the wire brush, I kind of scored the surface. Then I took a water hose, and the water hose. The water hose got any dust that might have accumulated from people uh, using lawn mowers and things like that. It stirs up the dust, and we don't want dust. Uh, the dust will inhibit any stucco paint from adhering well. So um, I did not apply Weldcrete or any bonding agent on this. We got a mechanical bond that's even stronger. We wet this, we misted it, so I'm looking at it. Now, say if it was 100 degrees, my applications differ a little bit. But right now, we're, we're still under 40 degrees, so it's, it's a bit chilly. You've got you to understand weather, you've got to understand uh, materials. And yeah, usually if you could apply one, you could apply most materials. The difference is you have to know and understand what each stucco or plaster material uh, is capable of and what it's designed for. If you're not sure what it's designed for, you better call somebody that actually knows. Uh, again, we show, we show a lot of you folks how we do it and explain why and how and if the do's and don'ts. But again, guys, if you're not certain, call somebody, get a professional out there and have them do it. I'm gonna just, uh, see, on this particular finish, I apply the base coat. This is a base coat, skim coat, means the same thing. And no, you don't have to scratch it. I got a lot of folks who watch, they go, 
Where's the scratch coat? A scratch coat is for when you're doing, thank you, sir. When you're doing um, lath, paper wire over a wood substrate. You do not need a scratch coat if you're going over concrete, block, uh, CMU walls as they're called, uh, terracotta walls, uh, anything that has a, a porous nature like this, stone even. Now how I get my corners is quite easy. Let me get off this hump. I can put it on two different ways, guys. We can put it on this, squeeze a little bit of excess off, squeeze a little bit of excess off, a little bit of excess off. Then we come to the other side and do the same thing where I put a little bit on and I leave a little excess, leave a little excess because these corners are going to be jagged. And that's how you get a corner. I'll show you a faster way to get a corner without messing around, guys. Okay, put it on here, put it on here. And as it falls, because I'm not really concentrating on doing that, you take the mud, take it straight up like that, and then just jag it up a little bit. We don't want pretty corners, we want, we want jagged corners because that's what they have, so that's what we want to match. Okay, let me show you something about tops, guys. Generally, I'll take my chop and go like this and pull that right off the top because we want jagged tops to match the jagged finishes of the original. House has one finish, retaining wall up there has another. So I'll just take some mud and put it right here. This one, uh, give it all to me. I'm just, you can close your eyes, guys, and do this. You want to make, you want to put enough mud up here that uh, will still give the jagged look and give you a top. And while he's uh, handing me some mud, what I do is like to pyramid it, go this way, go that way, and then hit it flat. And now you can jagged your corners. Boom. We got a little bit of mud, excess. I'm squeezing a little bit of excess and then hitting it. Squeeze a little bit of excess, then hitting it. That way I'm getting about a half inch on these corners. Some folks say, hey, don't do the corners because we're going to cap them like this beautiful thing. This, you can leave it loose, put your electricity in it and all that jazz, if that's what you have in mind. Now what we do is we keep putting it on. I'll show you how we do these textures too. This is one of Jason's favorite textures. The beard behind the, the camera who's actually filming me right now. Okay, so I built that corner here. Now I'm just going to reinforce it. We're going to take it and just take practice. You look at it and it doesn't have to be perfect because this finish we're doing is imperfect. So if I made it pretty, I'd be defeating the whole purpose. I'm going to do one last thing and then show you some other stuff, guys. All right. Personally, I'm getting warmed up finally. It's a cold day out here. Everybody's walking by, has got earmuffs on, jackets, ski jackets, and I just took my ski jacket off to prove a point. Plus, I don't want to get stucco all over my ski jacket. All right, that's good, uh, Edgar. All right, all right, all right. Let me uh, take this last little bit right here because even though I wet these walls, saturated them for a mechanical bond that's actually stronger than any bonding agent I can apply. Uh, it's wet. How long will this take to, to dry? If it was about 80 degrees, it'd already be dry. If it was 100 degrees, I'd have to keep missing as I'm plastering because it would suck up and just suck the moisture right out of this Portland cement. What is Portland cement? Excuse me, fellas. Let me uh, get over here. I want to show these guys something because, all right, this is Lou's job. People say, why do you always say that, Lou? That's because of Mary Tyler Moore show. <laughs> uh, Ed, they'd always call him Lou. All right, here's anyway. Uh, this is, a lot of you guys say, Kirk, I'm going to Home Depot. I'm going to Lowe's. Uh, what material do I buy? I say, buy a Portland cement, buy some sand. They go, what the heck is that? And I say, okay. If you're going to Home Depot, buy the Rapid Set. It's uh, a product that has sand in it and cement. All you do is add water. Here's how us professionals do it. Okay. We bring... Um, a yard, I, like this morning, I, I got a, a couple yards of sand. Now, what a yard of sand is 2,400 pounds. A ton is 2,000 pounds. So you get your sand. 
and then you get your cement plaster. There's so many different cement plasters. I couldn't name them all here and bore the crap out of you guys. I just prefer this one here. It's sold at the material yards. It's um, a cement that has common cement and it also has lime in it. So it has everything all in one bag. And what is this? It's uh, Lehigh's. Lehigh's is making this all, all in one. It's premium. That way I don't have to get separate bags of plastic in common. So that's, that's a whole nother story and I won't get into. And the truck we use, of course, got everything. A fella says, uh, do you have like 20 of these? I said, yeah, I got about 15 of these. Because we use, it, we use everything. We come to a job like this, we have everything. The way, the way we do it is we come to a job once. I don't leave the job five, six, seven times to go back and forth to get materials. I have more materials than I need for every job when I get to that job. Anyway, guys, we're going to continue moving here. And when we get to these radiuses, uh, piece of cake. Close our eyes and go around them and do the tops the exact same way. Uh, I'm not worried about getting mud on these stairs because they have two inch flagstone going on this. So after we get all this done, we just take a trowel and trim it right out because it's all going to be covered. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you a few more tips since we're here. All right, we're on a radius wall. Do you have to, do you have to take it like this at a radius? Not really. Uh, because it's such a large radius, I'll just take it and just like I did on the other side. I'm taking it here and then I'll, I'll come back to it. And by the way, guys, you might, anybody watching uh, and sees what we, we've done over the last, I don't know, 10 years, uh, a lot of people say, hey, Kirk, how come you don't wear knee pads? Well, when I was working Union, we would stucco about anywhere between 10 houses a day with a gun. We'd go through 20 tons of sand and 200 bags. And I did wear knee pads. I was wearing these catcher's knee pads. Why? Because these catcher's knee pads, they're comfortable, man. These are so comfortable. It's like a lounge chair or a hammock. They don't fall off. They don't slide down. They don't cut your blood circulation off. So I know someone's going to comment and say, hey, Kirk, what kind of knee pads? Are they? They're catcher's knee pads from baseball. And another thing, too, guys, is because I, I don't want to jack up my, my elbows, like, say, here. I'm just being lazy. Now watch what I do. This trowel, the bottom, is going to go on the ground. Not my elbow, the trowel. The tip is going to go out and I'm putting all the weight on that tip while holding it. Or often I'll do this, guys. I'm putting it on, putting it on. Putting the mud on the wall. All right. Putting the mud on the wall. What I'll do sometimes is, hold off a sec. As I'm putting it on, and if I have a, see right now, I'm on the tip. I'm not on my elbow, I'm on the tip. It's just habit, guys. Make some of these things, especially your apprentices who watch what we do, make these things habit so you don't jack up your elbows. Now look, my hand is not on it, or my elbow. Now I'm using it, I'm going down. I'm using, I'm using the hock, I'm kind of like a crutch, man. I'm here or here, I'm never on my elbows, on, especially on concrete. I'll show you a couple other things too while, while we're at this because what we're gonna do is uh, knock this out I want to show you if, a little bit of basics before we, see, even lifting up guys, I'm lifting up, everything is with my crutches. Now Jay is, is spreading the texture over this entire everything. Uh, Jay is really good at textures. Okay, you put your pancakes in it guys. There's a lot of ways to do this. If I were to let this turn light gray, like the color of this, when it dries it's going to be that color. That's Portland cement. Here's concrete. Concrete is Portland cement with rock. Stucco or cement plaster or render as they say in the US or the uh, UK. All that is, instead of rocks, it's Portland cement with sand. So it's, it's a tanner color because of the sand. The rocks are usually whiter. So uh, that's Portland cement and this, this is gonna dry like that. There's three to five different ways to do this. Okay, Jay just put this on. Now you let the whole wall set uh, entirely and turn it one color. And what Jay is doing is this. Okay, he's just taking each one and he's taking the sponge flow. Sponge flow brings out the sander aggregate. Okay, now you, you bring out the aggregate. You just let it drip on it. A lot of water, guys. You just, a lot of water. Let it drip. Let it drip. And that'll, you let it drip. You see how that's dripping down? That's not gonna hurt the wall. That's actually good for the wall. You can just, a lot of water, guys. I mean, you can, you can just, a lot of water. Depending on the size, uh, 
depending on what type of pancakes you're putting on it or trial mark, no water or a lot of water. And yeah, you could use a felt brush. We used felt brush when we were working union for what interior coating, but you could also just use a, a, the brushes here if you, and the more water you put, you're gonna take away the sharpness of this. So depending on what you want, uh, use a little water or a lot of water. Anyway, guys, we're gonna uh, continue moving. And when we get done with uh, all of this, uh, we'll show you. Lou, he's uh, doing another mix. And that's how we do it, guys. We take the, the sand from the back of the truck and do individual mixes. Edgar here, my nephew, is just happened to have the day off he's working with us. This guy is the bomb. It makes my life so easy. You're spoiling me, brother. Anyway, we're going to continue moving, and then we'll show you the end result. All right, guys. We're going to show you the, the final of this now. As you can see, uh, this is what the owner wanted. We're here talking with him and discussing things. As Jason says every other day, everybody has a fingerprint as far as a different texture. Uh, this is what floated his boat. He's happy, so we're happy. A lot of different ways to do this. When you're a big time stucco guy, a lot of different thing happens. On the way here, I was huffing and puffing, turning that truck. That's a nightmare without power steering. I thought, man, I got to put power steering before we leave to go home. No, I don't. This is what's left of my power steering belt. No power steering belt, no alternator, no, uh, no alternator, no water pump. I can't drive that. We're in San Anselmo. That's an hour and a half away from my house. So waiting. Um, Jay's about to get off the camera and go get all the belts, all four, and another alternator. And we're going to have some fun and stay here till dark and put it back. Life and times of a big time contractor. Anyway, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching it. As usual, live long and plaster. Hey guys, I forgot to tell you yesterday because I was sidetracked with uh, what's left of my fan belts. But we got this truck here at, we were an hour and a half away, San Anselmo. We fixed the truck somewhat, but we're getting ready to go to work now and it's just as cold and because we're not mechanics we got a whole thing of oil over here so you want to be a big time contractor but i wanted to tell you guys uh my wife uh brought me a cup of coffee as she, she sees me freezing my arse off and fortunately carl my neighbor he's a 40-year ford mechanic so i have to turn this over to him just like sometimes you guys turn the stucco over to me by the way what i missed yesterday to say was if you guys want to see how that texture was put on I'm going to put a link in the description to Jason's channel because he does he did all the texturing. All I did was apply everything and we got out of there. Anyhow, guys, we thank you for watching and take care of your vehicles. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates. So if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.